morning. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the God of man, the God of mercy, of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. God, our provider, help us, our desire to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways to make it different from the ways of the world in which you live in. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and lead us the life in the world. Amen. We love it. People of God. And Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there is always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into eternal life. Amen.
flourishes and supplies all the God of the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also be with you. Let us pray.
And even if not, did you learn from it? And E, experiencing the holy. What does or would it mean for you to experience God in your decision making? Now I'll invite you to take your little blue sheets that should have been available when you came in. And you can write this down just for yourself or to share. We're collecting these as a snapshot of how Trinity makes decisions as individuals to gain insights about how we might make decisions as a church. So you're not required to share, but at the very least, jot something down for yourself. Please write down one takeaway regarding your decision making. You may either keep it for yourself and your own discernment, or you may put it in the offering plate anonymously, of course for us to gain a sense of how Trinity as individuals makes decisions. So again, on your blue piece of paper, I'll give you a few moments. What's one takeaway that you may have noticed today in how you make decisions? I'm standing up here not for accountability, but for time, just so you all know I'm not really watching on your back. Any kids, come on out. Any children here? Nobody? Got one, a couple, three. I told Pastor Tim I think I'm gonna need a chair. After 45 years, now I'm in my 49th year of ministry. I won't get up. <laughs> What's today? We talked about Trinity. What is a Trinity? Swimming? You swim, okay. Do you know there's other forms of water? Snow. How many of you like the snow? <laughs> well, I like it. I'm from California. Okay. How about the ice? Like it? Keep an ice. 
ice skate. It's not really easy to drive in, but you can ice skate. And then there's another form, the fog. Maybe it's fog. You know what fog is? The mist. It's all water. And yet God is like that. That's why we have Trinity Sunday to remind us that God comes to us in different ways, different manners to make himself known. Last Sunday we had Pentecost Sunday, in which we played up the what we call the third person of the Trinity, of the, Trinity the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit that came to us in baptism for the first time. But we have the Spirit of God, the triune God. So let's remember next time that when you hear the pastor, you can impress Pastor Tim. We know what the Trinity is, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And when you see people making the sign of the cross, can you do that? In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit as a reminder of baptism. When God first came into our life, this pleasing and plan of God. It's complicated, and yet God promises to come among us simply because he loves us. Let's pray. Father God, we thank and praise you for the Lord that, that you are our three and one God, the triune God. And when we lift up the Trinity this day, we know that you are with us in different ways, but you are promised to be with us as you love us, call us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Back to seats. reading from Isaiah. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne high and lofty, and the hem of his robe filled the temple. Seraphs were in attendance above him, each had six wings. With two they covered their faces, and with two they covered their feet, and with two they flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The pivots on the thresholds shook at the voices of those who called, and the house filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me! I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I live among a people of unclean lips. Yet my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphs flew to me, holding a live coal that had been taken from the altar with a pair of tongs. The seraph touched my mouth with it and said, now that this has touched your lips, your guilt has departed and your sin is blotted out. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? And I said, Here am I, send me. Word of God, word of life.
reading from Romans. Brothers and sisters, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the deeds of the body, you will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received a spirit of adoption. When we cry, Abba, Father, it is that very spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. If, in fact, we suffer with him so that we may also be glorified with him. Word of God, word of life. Thank you, God. Redeemer. 
Amen. One of the things that I find most striking about the Trinity, and I feel this every year that we come to this day in the church year, whether I'm preaching or sitting out in the pew, is how otherworldly this doctrine is. And especially most captured by the prophet Isaiah, this wonderful vision. Think of what the seer, so to speak, was, was viewing. This majestic God who was all-knowing, who was all-seeing, and then we travel down, of course, to our gospel, or to our psalm, and we see the voice. God makes himself known just with the spoken word. Warning us against other voices, what we call counterfeit voices that may block hearing the true word and true voice of the gospel. Then we get to Romans. Romans, it talks about life in the spirit, the spirit of freedom, freedom in the gospel. And then finally we get down to John. And Jesus has this engaging encounter with Nicodemus, who it says came to him by night. Nicodemus who asks these inquisitive questions. He's supposed to be a teacher of the law, and yet he comes purely as a pupil. Jesus tells him about being born from above, what many people today call being born again, being born anew. And yet the spirit blows, we said, where it wills. Today, over the years, it is God has perceived as so big and so awesome and so almost unreachable that it's backfired on us due to the reality of sin and due to the media and all the stuff that's happening in the world. That pretty soon, God seems unreachable. Who is God in my life? What am I about? And you can go over to, sometime when you have time, go over to Barnes & Noble and take a gander down the religion and philosophy uh, hallways and you will see all sorts of ways in which people are searching for the meaning to life. Searching to what life is really about. Searching to not only life is about but what their faith is about is god real after all these years and after all these centuries people are asking that and then in, in the top in the midst of all that the church the organized church the church as a whole via other denominations all these other denominations in the world um, have made all sorts of mistakes in their brokenness Many people have come to church and have been blocked by their sexual orientation or their race or their social economical bracket or, or the way they dress. And the list can go on and on. And pretty soon, God not only seems, unreach seems unreachable, but the love of this God that has been proclaimed even by his followers is you cannot see it anymore. How many of you have heard of the musical, rock musical, God's Tell? Okay. Show of hands. Okay. And you remember that song that was in the was in God's Bell? Day by day. No, don't worry, I'm not gonna sing it. Because it wouldn't be pretty. Guarantee you, my family, if my family were here, they would be nodding their head. Day by day, day by day, oh dear Lord, three things I pray to see thee more clearly, to follow thee more nearly, 
to love me more dearly day by day. So people are asking today, where is this God? Much less a trying Lord in God who is unconditional, who is inclusive, who is attainable. Where is he? And people continue to ask that in the sense of restlessness and anxiety. Yes, both in the church and outside. St. Augustine was, uh, if you ever hear about him, he lived way, way back to the third century. And he was a teenage Italian, let me tell you. He dropped out of church, uh, rebelled against his family, and then all of a sudden discovered this living Christ and discovered the forgiveness of sins and the new life that was at his fingertips. And he said this one thing, our hearts are restless until they find rest in thee. My wife and I moved in, as I said during the announcements, moved into a condominium. And in our living room, as I watched the TV and right next to it around at the entertainment center, is a plaque. And when I happen to be, uh, I, you know how you pass things up in the room and you don't see it, it's just three by four. And I looked and it said this one statement, faith makes things possible not easy. Faith makes things possible, not easy. And thinking about that, I think what it really means is the God that we worship and the God that we proclaim today is not going to fix it all, is not going to cure it all. There's no fix all when it comes to having Christ or the triune God in one's life. But he does promise to meet us. Meet us when the battles come on. Meet us when the obstacles take place. He will meet us. Not only will he meet us there, but he'll actually take us through that. Not to do it for us, but to accompany us, whatever that may be. Whether it's a moment of grief, a time of grief, or a time of, of, of great emptiness, God will be there. I attended seminary, uh, used to be called Northwestern Lutheran Seminary, and later merged with today's Lutheran Seminary. My prof, one of my profs, was Dr. Robert Rote. Rote. He made a statement one day in class years ago when I was in seminary. Christianity is not a religion. We'll take a break. So we took a break. And kind of wondering, well, what does he mean by that? Came back and he says, we'll talk about it afterwards. And he says, all religions report or picture people trying to reach or appease this supreme being. But there's one faith where God actually goes the other way. He comes down to us. He makes a decision to reach us, to love us. And that's what makes Christianity different. And thinking about that, it really makes a difference. He said what Christianity is, is a relationship. A relationship that we've noted today in the service that begins in Holy Baptism. A relationship, a, a friendship with Jesus and the triune God throughout all of our years. We pray that as we come to worship, as we experience worship, as we experience word and sacrament, that God will be with us and in us as we grow in our Christian faith. The faith that we seal, of course, in our confirmation for those of us who have been confirmed and so forth. So the list goes on and on. This God, then, let's get this straight, especially when you look at our gospel today. This God that came to us as loving Father 
compassionate father, but who has taken the person of his son, Jesus Christ, to take on our sins, to take on our burdens, to take on all of our hurts as he went to Calvary's cross and beyond for our salvation. And then finally, the one today that exists in the power of the Spirit, the one who helps us live, the one who helps us live out this baptismal life. That's the person of the Trinity. That's what the Trinity is about. This God who is far off has come close and personal to us each day, each hour. Why? Simply because he loves you and me. He's as real as Jesus dying on the cross. He's as real as hearing the word, your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus. He's as real as this baptismal font, the pool of baptismal water. He's as real as the bread and wine that we will use today in order to receive the body and blood of Christ as a visible assurance of his forgiveness. He's as real and personal at the time of every need, at the time of every prayer that we utter, big or small. He's as real as any time you and I have acted and spoken out for an ethical a time of ethics and when you know something is right and speak so. That's our God. This one who has chosen to believe in us and hope in us. This three and one God who will be with us not just in worship, as important as that is, but he's real as we enter the outside. He'll be with us. And with such good news as this, we are becoming, we are as Luther talked about, we become as mere beggars telling another beggar where the food really is. This awesome three and one God who has promised to be with us, who is more accessible to us than we often give him credit. Thanks be to God. Amen.
With the whole church, let us confess our faith. We believe in one God, the Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things are made, for us and for our salvation. ecosystems that they flourish for generations to come. Merciful God, give us and those who hold authority in all areas of the Middle East the wisdom to know your will, courage to speak the truth, and strength to abandon retribution to seek a new creation. Enable us to see your world at peace. Shelter all who risk life and livelihood to protect others from violence, conflict, starvation, and injustice. On this Memorial Day weekend, we remember those who have lost their lives in war and conflict. Merciful God, we see you are heard. You are God of love and not of condemnation. Quiet the hearts of all who struggle with shame, regret, or questions of self-worth. Teach us to forgive ourselves and one another. Restore wholeness to all who seek hope and healing, especially Norm, Barbara, Laura, Nancy, Paul, Tammy, Edith, Sandy, Keith, Susan, Phyllis, Thomas, Nikki, Dolores, Karen, Ginger, Bob, Lexi, Hui Mei, John, Dave, Wanda, Richard, Christine, Jack, and family, Katie, Martha, Linda, Nancy, Gary, family and friends of Lilith Maynard, 
Kathy, Peggy, and Joey, Joanne, and the Stanley family. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Strengthen bonds between parents, children, and families of all varieties. We pray especially for adoptive and foster families, multi-generational households, and blended families. Grant gifts of nurture and patience to all caregivers. Merciful God. People of God, for what else shall we pray? We pray for the people involved in the Ukraine war, the Holy Land, and the conflict that is taking place at this very hour. We pray for our presiding bishop, Elizabeth, as well as our synod bishop, William. God of grace, hear our prayer. People in hospice care. things. Merciful God. The Spirit bears grateful witness to all children of God who have now come into their inheritance among the saints, especially Lois Stanley. As they received with hope, as they lived in hope in your gift of eternal life, so strengthen us in faith that we recognize your eternal presence even in this mortal, mortal life. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Receive our prayers, O God, and come quickly to our aid through the power of the Spirit and the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. And also with you. And share that peace with one another. Laura, right? Yes. yes. Peace be with you. Peace be with you. Lord.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We give thanks to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should all times and all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and merciful God. You reveal your glory as the glory of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, equal in majesty, undivided in splendor, one Lord, one God, ever to be adored in your eternal glory, and so with the choirs and angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we join, we praise your name and join our ending hymn. Gathered into one by the Holy. 
Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, power, and glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The table of life is spread before you. Feast on the goodness and mercy of God.
Now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Good morning. I'm Kate Kilkowski. I'm with the hospitality team. Um, May 27th, 1934. I'm sure most of us, have been, not all of us, were not there then. But that day, out on this corner, in a renovated old Victorian house, Trinity Lutheran Church opened its doors for their first service. 90 years, you didn't answer. The hospitality team has put together the first 
three celebrations for that anniversary this morning at Fellowship. And like Pastor Kim likes to say, we have cake. <laughs> <laughs> we knew with the holiday weekend that there wouldn't be a whole lot of people here, so we're gonna make it simple and have cake. And also we have gluten-free for those who wish to choose that. So we're having pocket cake, and anybody can use gluten-free. So please join us in the fellowship hall. Please rise. And the blessing of Almighty God, who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us, be with us now and forever. Amen. <clears throat>
wish you better, better have taken a day off. Yeah. It's, it's almost healed, yeah. Almost healed.